153rd Contact. Wednesday, November 25, 1981, 10.52 p.m. Billy says you are really in a hurry to meet me today, my friend. On the one hand, this is just right because I received a letter a few hours ago from Engelbert of which I would gladly like to hear your opinion. On the other hand, I have caught a cold, which is why talking today is somewhat difficult for me. For this reason, I would have preferred if I could have remained lying down. Quetzal says however, this conversation would be important. Billy says we are here now, and it should remain so. Quetzal says then I don't want to drag the conversation on for too long but get right to the point. It concerns Kay, because she causes me to worry. You know about the wrong things that have begun with her, with regard to Thomas. Our hope was that in a few weeks, Kay would recognize the falsity of this relationship. However, this has not occurred because Thomas has not allowed that necessary fairness to happen which we would have been allowed to expect. On my side, I thought that he would think about my words which I said in regards to him, when I said that there was something in him that he should resolve. Thus, I responded at that time that he should bring his desires under control in wanting to bind K to himself by all means and for him, every means was right. As has become apparent in the course of time since then, however, he is trying in no way for this fairness but quite the opposite in spite of my pointing explanation as to how we handle such matters on our world, he has not accepted this instruction and guidance because such was he but he used every opportunity and every unfair way in order to cast his spell on Kay and actually bind her to himself. I gave my explanations, specifically addressed to him alone, in order to point out to him that he is on the wrong track. And if he had actually thought about this, then it would have become apparent to him that his thoughts and feelings towards Kay are only selfish in nature, based on purely material values. If he had been willing to stop his selfishness, then he would have found the way of recognition, thus, he would have distanced himself from K, and on the other hand, which is very important, he has not determined himself to be a marriage partner and, ultimately, not even a close friend for this life. But now, she is about to commit a serious mistake, whereby it threatens to endanger her entire evolutionary goal. And because Thomas did not think about my words for personal, selfish reasons, a fault must be said of him, with regards to the aberration that Kay now suffers. Thomas is not her destiny neither as a close friend nor as a marriage partner. In accordance with her own destiny, her predetermined life partner should not step into appearance until after her 25th year of age, although, a postponement has already arisen that could lengthen this for up to three years. This postponement lies in the fact that Kay has suffered emotional destruction, which is due to the wrong and selfish drives of many earthmen which are aimed at the female life forms of this world. Kay's naivety regarding the truth in reference to the earthly man, who often uses the female life forms playfully, and often only as objects for the fulfillment of lust, has caused this psyche burdening destruction in her through corresponding experiences into which she let herself get involved. This has now enticed her to take a self-help direction which is of a completely wrong nature and through which she now mistakenly feels bound to Thomas. But she should stop this serious mistake very quickly and also resolve the wrong emotional bond with Thomas. Not much time remains for her anymore if her already major damage still shouldn't progress so far that it becomes irremediable. Talk to her about this and clarify the facts about the truth, and also make sure that in the future, Thomas no longer finds the opportunity to put Kay further under his spell. Billy says and how do you imagine this? Quetzal says it must be forbidden for him to appear more often in the center than what the routine jobs and meetings permit. Billy says you imagine that very simply. Quetzal says it's a matter of achieving Kay's evolution within her specific context, but this is already at risk, which is unfortunately true for many people in the world today, as a result of the degeneration of moral behavior. However, the members of the group have committed themselves to the mission work, 
and it is necessary within this context that they achieve their evolution according to their own destiny. You know this, which is why you should also pay attention to this and give advice to the group members regarding these interests while standing to the side. Billy says of course, but I cannot get involved in the private affairs of the members. Those do not concern me. Quetzal says that is correct, but for advice giving, you should speak with the group members about her personal concerns. Billy says I could do that, if they would ask me for advice. Quetzal says that is also correct, and because the group members are at the source, they should also use this assistance, by which they could also avoid a lot of inconvenience. Billy says however, that is only done by a few. Quetzal says unfortunately, that is also correct, and this attitude should be changed very quickly, so this will also draw you towards giving advice in such important matters. If this already would have been done earlier, as for example with Kay, then she would have remained spared from a lot of grief and even from certain psychological destruction. Billy says I can't force anybody. Everyone lives his own life. Quetzal says but appropriate advice would often prevent a lot of wrong and evil, as it would have been the case with Queso now, however, her own destiny has been endangered and also the balance of her psyche, which already may have the effect that in her life, much will need to be changed so that she can still achieve her goal. If that actually happens, then we should do our best to find appropriate solutions in order for her to reach her own specific goal. Billy says that will prove itself in time, but what should really be done now in the present situation? Quetzal says I explained this to you, nevertheless. But if you can't fulfill this task, then the closest thing might be that Kay's parents bring her near to the truth. But in order to address the matter otherwise sufficiently, it is also necessary that Thomas is pulled away from the duty of the night watch so that there is no further opportunity for him to bind K further to himself his duty should be taken over by Louis. Billy says I will first talk with her parents about these things. Quetzal says that should also be the right way. Do this in such a way. Billy says good, then this subject would be finished. Quetzal says I hope that we must lose no other words over this. Billy says great then I can burden you now with this letter. Quetzal says you can do that. Billy says here, my friend, read it at once. Quetzal accepts the letter and reads. Quetzal says Ferdinand behaves very strangely and incorrectly. Whether there are some in the group now who give themselves over to the pleasure of smoking, this can never be his affair, and it also does not entitle him to the constitution of such a letter, but neither to such demands. It seems to say that smoking is harmful to health, but that doesn't have to be absolute in every case. Already at an earlier time, we discussed these smoking issues, and it's been clearly explained to you that smoking is harmful only if it becomes health hazardous. For non-smokers, the tobacco products usually have no or only very mild effects, whereby non-smokers are not endangered by the smokers in this manner. Through the poisons of all kinds that have been introduced by the person into the atmosphere, people are thousands of times more at risk than non-smokers who remain in the residues of tobacco products. Only the earth people make the residues of tobacco products out to be the much worse than these actually are. Smoke residues such as ashes and stubs etc. are usually harmless, while on the other hand, the so-called passive smoking can be quite harmful when non-smokers are made to breathe in the cigarette smoke passively with smokers. Not every person is susceptible to the harms of smoking, but these exceptions are limited. In any case, however, exaggerations always appear in every form that either trivialize everything completely or else exaggerate them immensely. On the one hand, this happens by those smokers themselves, who are excessively given to this addiction, but on the other hand, this also happens by those people, and in very large measures, who in no way indulge in smoking addiction or who have freed themselves from it. And because there have already been many distinctive anti-smoking organizations on the earth for many years, 
especially vegetarian-oriented groups that also scorn the enjoyment of animal food from the wrong aspects, an anti-smoking initiative has developed, which truly finds no authorization. Our mission, and also that of the group, isn't that the group members and other outsiders have to become non-smokers or vegetarians even if the enjoyment of tobacco smoke actually evokes harmful effects in the body, etc. of the person. It should be that even in such matters, every group member and every other earth person can act at their own discretion, without any attempts being made by third parties to keep the smokers from their addiction. That would be an intrusion into the personal affairs of individuals, and it has nothing to do with our mission or with the instruction which was addressed by Ferdinand, of the earth person by the group members. On the other hand, the statutes state very clearly that any advertising or distribution of things that are foreign to the mission is prohibited in Fiku, which he does not observe with his action, nevertheless. His action even amounts to extortion to which the statutes also speak contrary, which is why he must be made aware of this urgently, along with the provision of potentially resulting consequences for him. And in the future, which must necessarily be explained, new group members must be made aware that the group has managed to develop to the current state only because such advertisements, demands, and extortion never received any attention and because every group member was truly free in his personal actions, which also must continue to remain. But now, it is doubtful as to whether one or the other answering techniques will work satisfactorily because my test attempts have shown that neither the monitor response method nor that of the mechanical voice would be useful. As my attempts showed, a monitor response wouldn't receive enough attention so that the answers could be grasped. A mechanical voice, however, acts on the earth person very coldly and impersonally, so the risk is that a rejection effect would appear. For this reason, I think that a familiar human voice alone is the solution we're looking for. Of course, I thought of your voice, which I could store as syllables in the response computer, which would then speak using your voice. Billy says that would be something, but I still think it isn't good. Quetzal says I don't understand because the group members are still accustomed to your voice. Billy says even so. Computers have the characteristic that they are so monotonous and choppy, Quetzal says no, you can rest assured, for that isn't the case here. Our linguistic computers speak very fluently and even correctly emphasize when they are stored and programmed with human voices. Billy says do you think, then, that the apparatus would speak in such a way as if it were me? Quetzal says that is correct, only in a few things would a weak alteration be noticeable, but these wouldn't be noticed remarkably. But whether this form of question answering is acceptable to the group members, this should be clarified by them. Billy says then I should bring this matter before the group. Quetzal says that is so. Billy says good, then I would like to state everything again so that I am sure of my case. Thus, please interrupt me if I say something wrong there is to be given the opportunity to the group members that they can bring forward all personal questions and other issues of interest to a special computer, which will then answer their questions using the best logic. For this purpose, a special soundproof room must be available in which solely the individual group member, undisturbed and isolated from listeners, can direct his or her questions to the computer there inside which harbors a store of knowledge of all personal data of all group members of the past and future. Then, this computer answers with my voice, while it gives the exact answers on a logical basis. Is this right? Quetzal says that is accurate up to a point the computer is not in this room because it is a device that is designed by me, which is to be installed in the telemeter disk that is located high above the center. In the aforesaid room, there will only be earthly apparatuses and devices, which will transmit the voices of the group members to the computer and which will also allow the voice of the computer to be heard in the room. Billy says oh, so the computer is in the telemeter disk. Then I misunderstood something. Quetzal says this apparatus must not be in the room because it isn't an earthly device. 
In addition, it is necessary that this apparatus hovers very high above the ground because it will have certain data stored in it, which must then be retrieved by the central computer in the station. Billy says ah, now I understand. Now, it just interests me whether a meditative process will be required for a question. Quetzal says no, because the question must take place acoustically and through a microphone. But for this, it is necessary that the psyche is very balanced, otherwise, the computer won't release an answer to the questions that are addressed to it. Thus, this necessary balance must be present in the person so that a question will be accepted and answered. Billy says then the group members should be balanced when they enter this room. Quetzal says that is correct, but up to the time of the completion of the enclosure, the group members should be so far that they own the necessary balance, otherwise, a meditative process would have to be carried out, but only by the male group members, while the female group members can implement another natural method to create the balance of the psyche, but this should not be mentioned officially in order to prevent misuse. Moreover, this method ensures the absolute safety of mental balance. Billy says and what method is that? Quetzal says you know it very well because it is. Billy says oh, so it's really the easiest and safest method. I know this, yes. Thus, women should really have no problem in creating the necessary balance. It's just that with the man, this method doesn't function because it isn't for him because instead of balance, usually something else develops that is probably connected with his way of thinking which, unfortunately, is not well balanced but has degenerated in this respect or has at least degenerated in many cases. Quetzal says that is correct, unfortunately. Billy says and how do the females among you hold up with the creation of the balance if you even have such question answering computers? Quetzal says those are actually available to us and they're used very often. Our people are all so balanced that no one must first create the balance. Still, many females use the aforementioned method because it not only increases mental balance but there are many other advantages. Billy says this is also known to me. But now, another question how many of the vegans and hirans are already here? Quetzal says all stations are fully occupied, and in the near future, some will get in contact with you. I am to convey love and peace to you from them. Billy says many thanks. Quetzal says also all the group members are to be greeted warmly by them. Billy says nice, then I also speak on their behalf in expressing my thanks and greetings. Certainly, everyone will be happy. But for now, we once spoke of this, or else it was with Semiaza that I would receive a number of names for our given name list. Quetzal says I will gladly do that if I find the necessary time for it. Billy says might it be possible that this time, I could get other names, maybe from the Lirans or Vagans. Quetzal says that should be possible, I would approach them for those. Billy says thank you very much. Then I have a question for Benedette if you permit. Quetzal says she has asked about this for a long time, I know. The concerns, however, are not yet ripe for saying, which is why I would like to wait a bit, which she should please understand. Nevertheless, she shouldn't worry. Billy says also good, thanks. Quetzal says for the Earth people, such affairs appear to be a problem, but quite wrongly, as the group members will come to know, because other similar things will still appear several times, for we will try to regulate the calm but often destroyed self-determinations of the group members that are repeatedly associated with such incidents. Indeed, it would be better for the parties involved if the origins lay elsewhere as it would also be better for what emerges from it, as well as for the group and for the mission itself and its fulfillment. Nevertheless, the origins force circumstances which are not commendable and which can also bring difficulties with themselves. But in any case, we already spoke about this earlier, even if these concerns were not grasped by the group members and were even misunderstood. For this reason, 
In reference to the origin, we had to take measures that are just not commendable because they are different than what was intended for the persons concerned, which then leads to doubts and the like within them unfortunately. If we could make everything clear, if all the parties involved and all other group members would think rationally of the matters, then no problems would appear. Then, the origins would be just as clear, understandable, and above all, would be accepted, as well as what emerges from it. Billy says thus, your long story, in short, is that you don't want to speak openly about certain matters or else you can't do this because there is the risk that some people will, once again, catch something in the wrong hook. But your confusing speech is only apparently confusing because the person's concerned, if one can mention this generally, nevertheless understand what is meant by your word salad. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says I could have said all of that even more complicatedly. Quetzal says that may very well be, but is it very unfortunate that it even needs to be said at all because the group members have not progressed so far in their understanding that they could settle themselves into these matters? Billy says to whom you say this? Many are just stuck and are still misdirected. That is also the problem, which is why for ages to come. I should describe and make clear the facts concerning those matters which demonstrate themselves to the person of the earth as directives of joy, perception of attraction, and mental hygiene and balance, etc., if he adheres to certain rules, etc. But the way I see it, if I would clarify this now, then I would be crazy or else be called such. Quetzal says we talked about that recently, when I was so amused in your workspace. But I must say, you know very well how to paraphrase the facts so that these are only understood by those who are precisely oriented over this. Billy says yes, I said that I can also beat around the bush. Quetzal says of course, you understand this very well, but I will give you help in this evil by talking about this problem with those who will visit you in the coming time. On their side. They should bring what they get from the talk and deliver the necessary explanations about this. A female would probably be best suited for this. Billy says that is a possibility. I enjoy being surprised. Quetzal says then it should be. But it is now that time, my friend, because you look very tired. Billy says fever and malaise. Quetzal says that is apparent. Then until we meet again my friend. Billy says bye. Quetzal says just a moment do you still think of the warning? Billy says you mean about the emigrating? Quetzal says exactly that. Billy says in the last days, for sure, because the newly transmitted prophecies are sufficient for that. Quetzal says that is correct because they should also warn you. All events and the overall behavior of the earth people until now still allow no ray of hope that the expected events could be decreased or be settled. Nevertheless, we continue to work in order to be able to create, at least, a reduction. Billy says our difficulties lie with the finances, but you know that. Quetzal says if our proposals cannot be met for this reason, then we would have to find another solution. But this would be difficult because it would certainly be linked with more financial resources than an emigration. Billy says I know, and furthermore, it wouldn't be so certain. Unfortunately, there are simply no honestly interested people who would also be willing to support the matter financially. Sectarianism is far more in demand than the truth. Quetzal says unfortunately, that's true, but we will continue to try, but now, until we meet again. Billy says bye, my friend, and until we. Ah, now something else comes to mind you said that Louis should take over the night watch for Thomas, does this also apply to the two Saturdays and the half watch? Quetzal says no, it should only be two nights, from Friday to Saturday or from Saturday to Sunday. Billy says good but there is still another problem, namely when many group members are present, such as during the meeting days. Quetzal says then there should be an arrangement with three people, which changes monthly. 
particularly with regard to this necessary and important task. However, it must be said that occasionally, this is not taken seriously and the determined points are not committed. More and more, I have found out recently that this monitoring is neglected whereby those responsible for the watch only spend their time reading or working in the rooms, without carrying out the much-needed security patrols. Such a wrong action is not only a breach of duty, but it can also cause great harm to the center as well as to the inhabitants. Still, with respect to this, I would like to mention no names, but if these matters do not change, then the guilty ones must be identified and be called to account. But now, it results from this individual misconduct that a control is determined, which is responsible for the monitoring of the night watch. Billy says ah, even so. Quetzal says talk this over with Engelbert, and also take care of the fact that the tiresome aspects with Thomas are immediately put in order because these matters have become urgent. But now, until we meet again. Billy says bye.